In this video, we will learn how to make fertilizer blends in small batches. Fertilizer blends are mixtures of various granular fertilizers. Each granular fertilizer ingredient contributes one or more specific plant nutrients. When mixed together, they make a balanced fertilizer blend designed to meet a crop's multiple nutrient requirements. A fertilizer company may want to test several formulations in trials before settling on a product to manufacture at a large scale. Small fertilizer blend batches allow several different fertilizers to be mixed and field tested at a low cost. Researchers may want to test different concentrations of nutrients, slow release fertilizer products, different chemical sources of nutrients, or inclusion of additional nutrients to determine crop response. Small batches are needed to make all of the different fertilizer treatments for experimental evaluation. Blends that we make at a small scale can be duplicated in a blending facility so successful products can be rapidly pushed to the market. Let's discuss the basics of blending fertilizers. Blends are made from fertilizer granules, usually between 2 and 4 millimeters in diameter. Granules in this size range will not segregate during blending or subsequent transport. This assures a uniform product. Because of the various ingredients used in fertilizer blends, the granules may have different colors and shapes. Blending ingredients need to be compatible. Not all blending ingredients are compatible. Some will react chemically, while others will attract moisture and degrade the fertilizer blend in the coming weeks or months. Before blending, check ingredients compatibility using a fertilizer compatibility chart like the one illustrated from Fertilizers Europe. There are other fertilizer compatibility charts available through a web search. No chart has every potential ingredient, so you may need to look at several charts to identify your specific ingredients. Before we blend, we need to assure that our ingredients are in the correct size range. Some fertilizers may have degraded in storage and contain fine particles. These can be separated using a nylon screen. If a fertilizer has clumps in it, these need to be broken up. If fine particles result from breaking, then these also need to be sieved. Incorporating micronutrients into blends poses specific challenges. Micronutrients are nutrients that are vital to crop growth but are required in very small quantities, often less than one kilogram per hectare. If supplied as micronutrient granules, only a few micronutrient granules will be applied. This reduces the possibility of root interception and plant uptake. To resolve this problem, micronutrient powders can be coated onto fertilizer granules. This assures that wherever fertilizer granules are applied, micronutrients will also be applied. We will demonstrate how to coat micronutrients onto granular fertilizers. Micronutrient coated blends will give crop responses very similar to compound fertilizers of the same composition. A compound fertilizer is one in which every granule contains uniform concentrations of all nutrients. Compared to blends, Compound fertilizers are more uniform in color and size. Fine granular and crystalline ingredients are not appropriate for blending. They will separate from granules and are too large to adhere to granules as coatings. Several micronutrients are commonly available as crystalline products. Do not use these in your formulations you may be able to grind these down to a fine powder appropriate for coating using a blender or other grinding equipment. Before we begin blending, 
we must first calculate the quantities of ingredients that go into blends. For the purposes of this video, we will not go into detail regarding ingredients calculations. You will, however, need to follow these six steps. 1. Decide the rates of nutrients you want to apply per hectare. This includes nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, zinc, boron, and others. 2. Choose the fertilizer ingredients you want to use, for example, DAP, MAP, NPS, KCL, polysulfate, urea, zinc sulfate, cuprous oxide, or any other. 3. Check ingredients compatibility using a compatibility chart. 4. Calculate the rates of each fertilizer ingredient to achieve the application rate for each nutrient. 5. Calculate the total area that you want the formulation to cover for all sites in your trial or demonstration. 6. Calculate the quantity of each fertilizer blend ingredient as the product of steps 4 and 5 above. The effective rates of micronutrients required depend on whether micronutrients are applied as coated powders or as granular micronutrients. Typical micronutrient rates for agronomic crops when coated are 0.2 to 0.4 kilograms of boron or copper per hectare, 0.5 to 1.5 kilograms of zinc, manganese or iron per hectare. If using granular micronutrients, use two to four times these rates. Rates will vary depending on the particle size and the chemical form, for example, sulfate, oxide, or chelate. Get advice from commercial suppliers of micronutrient coating materials when developing your blend. Now, let's get down to the business of mixing fertilizer blends. When blending 10 kilograms or more, we will use a small cement mixer. When blending less than 10 kilograms, a plastic bucket with a sealable or screw-type lid is most convenient. We prefer electric cement mixers because they are reliable, easy to maintain and come in a variety of sizes. A petrol or diesel cement mixer may be a good choice if electric power is not available. These mixers are higher maintenance but also have a larger volume. First, weigh out the quantities of fertilizer ingredients you have calculated using a balance of the correct precision. Next, place the granular ingredients into the cement mixer. Check to see that the granular ingredients are mixing well. Fertilizers of different colors should be uniformly distributed. If not uniformly distributed, increase the tilt of the mixing drum. Allow granular ingredients to mix until the mixture is visibly uniform. This should take less than a minute. If all of your ingredients are granular, your blending is complete and you are ready to move the blended fertilizers to bags for further weighing. To coat fertilizer granules with micronutrient powders, we will first coat the fertilizer granules with an adhesive product which will bind the fertilizer powders to the micronutrients. A dedicated fertilizer adhesive product can be obtained from a manufacturer. If not easily accessible, a vegetable oil can work sufficiently well to hold the micronutrients in place for the short term. The amount of adhesive or vegetable oil should be about 35 to 40 percent of the weight of all of the micronutrient powders. For example, if you have 1000 grams of micronutrient powders in a mixture, you will require 350 to 400 milliliters of adhesive or vegetable oil. 
First, tilt the drum upright. Add the adhesive or vegetable oil used to stick the micronutrients to the granules. The upright position is advised to prevent the adhesive product from contacting the tines of the mixer. After the adhesive has been added, tilt the drum and activate the rotation. This will allow the granular ingredients to mix and the adhesive product to evenly coat all the granules. This should require less than a minute. To add the micronutrient powders after adding the adhesive product, stop the mixer. Dig a small hole into the granular fertilizer. Then place the micronutrient powders in the hole and cover. Place a clear plastic cover over the opening of the cement mixer which is held in place by magnets. The plastic cover can have a hole in the center of about 6 inches or 15 centimeters in diameter to permit addition of more adhesive if required. The plastic cover limits the loss of micronutrient dust as the mixer turns. Protective gear should include a dust mask, gloves and overalls. The dust mask is important to prevent dust inhalation, particularly of the micronutrient ingredients. Activate mixing for an additional minute. Then check your mixture to be sure that no powders have segregated and are at the bottom of your cement mixer. You can either empty the fertilizers into a large basin and then into a fertilizer bag or directly into a fertilizer bag. It's important to avoid spillage to assure that you have sufficient fertilizer for all of your plots. It helps to work in teams of two to avoid spillage. Placing a plastic sheet underneath the cement mixer can allow for easy collection of any spilled product. If you are blending 10 kilograms or less, you can use a bucket with a strong seal. Add the granular fertilizer ingredients and adhesive or oil, then rotate until the adhesive is well distributed and the granular fertilizers are well mixed. Then add micronutrient powders and rotate for about a minute. A clear bucket allows easy viewing to assure that the fertilizer is well mixed. Fertilizer ingredients and blends need to be properly stored. Fertilizer ingredients and blends need to be stored in airtight bags with intact plastic linings. The bags should not allow air to enter. While fertilizers come in bags with plastic liners, often the inner liner will tear. After the liner is torn, fertilizers will absorb moisture from the air and degrade. We will often transfer fertilizer ingredients and blends to sealed containers or sealed plastic bags to ensure that moisture cannot enter. We have found that grain storage bags, which have a thick plastic lining, resist tears and are a good way to store blended fertilizers and fertilizers from opened or torn fertilizer bags. After blending, weigh fertilizers into quantities for each plot. We prefer reusable plastic containers. Masking tape is good for container labels because it sticks well but is also easy to remove for container recycling. Fertilizer blends are easy to make. When you can make your own blends, you can test different nutrient ratios, add micronutrients or try new ingredient sources cost-effectively and without waste. The best performing blends can easily be transitioned into commercial production.